Okay, a crucial part of this module is the equations of constant acceleration. Sometimes we call that those SUVAT equations for reasons that you'll see. But it's quite important to call them constant acceleration because these equations can only be applied in situations where the acceleration is constant. If you've got something doing separate motion, so it's speeding up and then it's slowing down and it's going to constant speed, you have to take the separate parts of the calculation away from each other. Um, so we're going to look at what the equations are, going to go through fairly quickly because you don't need to be able to derive them, just to show, show you where they come from. We're going to make sure that we know when they can be applied and most importantly we're going to look at them to actually solve some problems. So first of all we better say what SUVA is. Okay, We've got five things we need to know about. The distance travelled, Okay, or possibly correctly we should call it displacement, S. The starting velocity, U. The final velocity, V. Acceleration, A. And time, T. Okay, only situations with constant acceleration. Okay, and we do have to watch the signs, otherwise you're going to get in a mess. So these are velocities and displacements, so they can have positive and negative signs. Generally speaking, we take right and upwards as being positive, but sometimes we can be a little bit naughty on that and take a shortcut if it helps us. So first one is one you'll remember from GCSE. The definition of acceleration is increase in velocity divided by time. If we think about the letters we've defined, that's acceleration A. The increase in velocity is the final velocity we take away the initial velocity, so that's V minus U, times T. If I just multiply up by the A, uh, by the T and then take the U across, I end up with the first equation, V equals U plus AT. Here's a little example. So a car's travelling 20 metres per second, then it accelerates to overtake, it accelerates at 5 metres per second for 3 seconds. How fast is it travelling now? Well, there's U, there's AT, it's 35. Hopefully if you understood acceleration, you didn't really need an equation for that, because it's increasing by 5 every second for 3 seconds, so it's gone up by 15. Okay, you also might remember the area under a speed time graph is the distance travelled. So if we want to know the distance travelled by an object when it increases its speed from U to V, Okay, we've got a trapezium. The way to work out the area of a trapezium is to do the sum of the sides times their separation divided by 2. So that gives us the distance travelled is a half U plus VT. So if we look at the same car, it's gone from 20 to 35 in 3 seconds. How far does it travel? Well, we're doing a half of um, 20 plus 35. That comes to 82.5 metres. Third equation, if we put these two together and do a little bit of slightly tricky algebra, okay, I'm not going to worry about that too much, but you can see that S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So again, if we look at the same example again, another way of looking at it, 20 meters per second, accelerates for three seconds, how far does it travel? Okay, we've got UT plus half AT squared, 60 plus a half times five times three squared is 22.5, 82.5 meters. We've already worked that out once. Okay, possibly the trickiest uh, equation of all gets us all of these things put together. You can go through the algebra if you want to. But we end up with this equation, v squared equals u squared plus 2as. And if we do the same thing again, we know it went from uh, 20. We know its acceleration was 5 meters per second squared. We've said twice that it takes 82.5 meters to do that. What's its final velocity? Well, we get v squared is u squared plus 2as, that's 20 squared plus 2 times 5 times 82.5. That comes to 1225, notice that's v squared. So lo and behold, our final velocity is 35 meters per second as we knew it was. Okay, so we've got a set of equations. The tricky bit is to then actually apply those to questions because we've got four equations to choose from. So the crucial technique is to know which equation to use. The way we do this is we write SUVAT. We look at the data. Sometimes some of the information is a little bit hard to spot. So a stone is dropped from 30 metres, falls under gravity. How long does it take to hit the ground? So we look for an S. We've got an S. It's going to fall 30 metres. Notice I've already been naughty and just call that 30 downwards as being positive. I'm taking gravity as being positive downwards as well. U, it looks like we haven't got a U, but if you look carefully, we'll see it's dropped. So that means the U is zero. Final velocity, well, I don't actually care how fast it hits the ground. It's not asking me that. I've got other questions to answer in the exam, so let's just put a cross against that, uh, V. Acceleration is 9.8. T is what we want to know. 
So this is the most crucial step of all in this. We look at that, we think, what equation do I want? Well, I don't know V and I don't care about V, so I want the equation that doesn't have V in it. They'll all be on the data sheet, okay? So all you've got to do is look for the one without V in it. So that's S equals UT plus half AT squared. Once we've got that, we just put in the data we've got straight from there. Don't do anything clever. Don't try and think about it. Just write down the numbers that you've already written over there. Be careful with a naught T because naught T is naught. So you end up with 30. Half of 9.8 is 4.9. 30 equals 4.9 T squared. T squared is 6.12. T equals 2.5 seconds. So just a few examples to see if we can do them. So a car goes from 0 to 30 in 5 seconds. How far does it travel? Write down your SUVAT. S is the one we want to know this time. U is 0, V 30. Don't know about acceleration. Don't want to know. Time is 5 seconds, so we're looking for the equation without A in it. Okay, the equation without A is a half U plus VT. Okay, half 0 plus 30 times 5, 75 metres. Okay, a stone is dropped and accelerates under gravity. How far does it fall after 8 seconds? Okay, again, we have to be a little bit clever because we want to know how far it's fallen. That's S. U is 0. Okay, don't know about V, don't care. Acceleration 9.8 time 8 seconds. So we're looking for the one without V in it. S equals UT plus half AT squared. Okay, not too hard again because the naught times 8 disappears. So we end up with 314 meters. Okay, again, space rocket takes off with an acceleration of 14, point, uh, 14 meters per second squared. How fast will it be going when it's got a height of 2000 meters? Okay. So the distance it's travelled is 2,000 metres, starts from zero, we'd like to know how fast it's going, we know the acceleration, we don't know how long it's taken to get there. Okay, so we want to know with that T in it. Okay, just plug all the numbers in. Don't forget to take the square root. It's going 237 metres per second. Okay, again, just pause the video maybe, see if you can do this one. So here's an acceleration of 4 metres per second squared. It's got to take off at 60 meters per second. We need the minimum length of the runway required. So again, like to know S, starting from zero, it's got to end up at 60. The acceleration is four, don't care about the time. So Warren V squared equals U squared plus two AS again. Okay, just watch that S there is not seconds. This is S for distance. So we need a 450 meter runway. Okay, so just again, just to remind you, you, these only apply in constant acceleration. So if you get a question like this, where a car accelerates and then goes at a constant speed, and you need to work out the distance, you can still do the same stuff. So you can still do your SUVAT, but you've got to do your SUVAT for the first part of the motion. So don't start using this eight seconds. Do the first five seconds first. Do the equation with that A in it. Work out the distance. So 50 meters before... Uh, sorry, 50 meters while you're accelerating. Once you've stopped accelerating, that's easy because you're doing 20 meters per second for eight seconds. So that's just 160 meters. Your final answer is to add those two together. Okay, so just don't disengage your brain. Don't just write SUVA every time. Have a think first of all about what's going on.